Hello and welcome to our next instalment of A to Z Chats. My name, you don't see me a lot, is uh, Bill and I'm the co-director of A to Z Animal Care, which is a pet groomers based in Beverston, Kent. Today, we're really lucky to be joined by Amy Clark, the founder of Barking Mad About Animals, which is based in Tenterton. Hello, Amy. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Brilliant. All good. Long day, but uh, it's all been good. Thank you. Yes, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're the, you're the founder of Barking Mad About Animals. Perhaps you can tell us a bit about yourself and your company. Yeah, so um, Barking Mad About Animals, I set up in the summer of 2010. So that's been going strong now for nearly 10 and a half years, which is amazing, actually. Yeah. Um, so my services include dog walking, pet sitting, house sitting and equine care. So I'll just tell you a little bit about each. Uh, dog walking, I do on a 30 minute or 45 minute basis. And I walk dogs either ad hoc. So some clients may only need me a handful of times a year. Perhaps they have relatives or neighbours that generally walk the dogs mm -hmm. but need someone as a backup. Um, anything to seven days a week. I actually work for a lady who I dog walk for Monday to Sunday. Oh wow. So, <laughs> yeah it, it's great and anything really on a permanent basis from one to one to seven days a week. Um, and a variety of dogs as well. I've got little Jenny, who's a rescue Jack Russell, who's quite elderly. Yeah. And has got a few leg problems, bless her. So she likes nothing more than a little mooch around Tenterton High Street, having a sniff and taking in her surroundings. And then on the other end of the scale, I walk working dogs. So right. lively spaniels, labs, vigilers, that sort of thing, who are just full throttle for... 45 minutes and don't Take stop. Money. Just don't stop. <laughs> Some of them I don't even see for most of the time because they're in and out of brambles and shrubs and goodness knows what. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, a, a variety of dogs. Um, pet sitting I do um, when people are on holiday or they might just be away for overnight somewhere, something like that. Um, and I'll go in once or twice a day. Um, Generally, if they haven't got dogs, so they don't need me to stay overnight. Um, if they've got cats, chickens, small pets, horses, that sort of thing, um, I'll check on them, feed them, obviously. Um, and also any any house chores, bins putting out, post collecting, uh, lights on and off, drawing curtains, that sort of thing. Right. And then the house sitting is generally with people with dogs and they need me to be there overnight. Um, so, and that again, I can do a one night stay, anything up to a six week stay. I've housed that for six weeks for someone before. Six weeks? Yeah, and I've, I've got a client on my books that goes away a lot. He does a lot of business abroad. So it might be anything from a few days up to a month at a time. And that will be throughout the year. It might be something quite last minute or something I've you know got booked in. Um, and equine care, I generally only cater for horses that are quite simple, <laughs> simple <laughs> routines, um, yet that are mainly uh, turned out for most of the year. I'll do some food cooking, um, feeding, rugging up, turning out, bringing in, and uh, mucking out. Um, horses is more complicated and time consuming routines. I don't generally cater for it just because I haven't got that time. I'm mainly yeah. taken up with dog walks, etc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, if someone's asked you to stay there for a long time, do they have to have a swimming pool and stuff? Jacuzzi. Do you know what most of them do, and it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I I did a house sit um, in September, and we had a bit of a a heat wave, and it was great. And they had a big pool, and they were just like, you know, help yourself do what you like blah 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 and I thought I'm really living the dream now I'm actually getting paid to lovely house swimming pool lovely dog I had a great time <laughs> <laughs> exactly and I couldn't go away this year so that was the next best thing <laughs> brilliant so ten and a half years is a, is a long time to be going what uh, inspired you to create Barking Mad About Animals then yeah, so I um, 
animals have always been a huge part of mine and my family's life. We've always had dogs, we've always had pets. And I started horse riding when I was two years old. And I then started working for a family when I was 11. And I um, would look after the horses and we used to compete as well um, and go all over the place really up until I was about sort of 18 that sort of age mm. my granddad actually used to take in injured wildlife or anything that needed nursing back to health so we'd pop round there and he'd have a hedgehog or a bird or something so it's just been a real integral part of our whole family yeah. um, and I knew I what I knew I wanted to work with animals but I didn't know what exactly to do so I did a criminology degree, as you do, <laughs> <laughs> which obviously is that, yeah, is money well spent. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just thought I'd get out of Tenton being 19, Tenton was a bit boring. I'll go and get a degree, blah, 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 blah. See, I did my criminology degree at Brighton University, um, but my dad fell very poorly. He's got dementia and right. it was during that time he was having a really tough time and it started to take hold of him um so i moved back home to help look after him was doing sort of retail jobs which was fine but not the most stimulating thing i was never rushing out the door to go to work mm-hmm. um and it was just a conversation my mum had with a friend and she knew i was you know i was experienced with dogs and interested in animals etc so she said, well, if Amy wants to do some dog walking and pet sitting for me, um, that would be great. And I literally jumped at the chance. And that was literally it from then. It Word of mouth, I did a little bit of advertising and here I am. And I've honestly never looked back. <laughs> and I've made a living out of it. You don't mind getting up in the mornings either? No, I never, ever wake up in the morning and think, oh, I've got to go to work. Or I've got to deal with that person. Because <laughs> yeah. um, 10 years ago, I, I was thinking a little bit like the group, dog groomers. I, I certainly, when Emma said to me she wanted to be a dog groomer, I certainly wasn't aware of what dog grooming was all about or where they were based. Dog walkers was probably a bit similar, really. I mean, these days, yeah. they're a bit more popular, aren't they, the businesses? But Absolutely. Walking. Yeah. When I started, there, there wasn't many people doing it. And that's why I thought it would just be a stopgap. Mm. I never thought I could actually make a living out of it and 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 do it because they just I didn't, just didn't think there was that much of a calling for it, but there was mm. and there is more people doing it now and and especially due to redundancies all that sort of thing I have been, I have noticed that more people are um, going down the the pet business route but luckily I've set my my business I've set my roots and. Um, and yeah, I'm, you know, I'm still sort of really pre-COVID, I was always turning down work. So okay, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. And I think word of mouth is, a, is, is better than picking someone out of a paper, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. So what sort of areas do you cover that you'd likely to Tenton on? Do you travel or? Um, so yeah, I'm based in Tenton, obviously. And I tend to really only do a five or six mile radius of Tenton. Um, so Stone, Appledore, Woodchurch, High Holden, Rolvenden, Wittersham, that sort of area. Um, ideally more close to Tenterden because then that means it's less travel. Um, I, I'm not rushing about as much if I get caught in traffic and it delays my day, etc. So, um, but yeah, I do cover cover those areas. All right, brilliant. Okay, cool. So. If I want to say I, I live in Stone, if I, I, I'm going on holiday for a few weeks and I've got five dogs, two cats, five chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, that's at horse. least £200 a day. <laughs> <laughs> and a horse in uh, Woodchurch. So if I approached you and said, you know, have you got any availability on these dates? What's, what's the process? How do you sort of determine that I'm a right fit for barking mad animals or how do we sort of do business? Yeah, so um, if you contact me via email, phone, whatever, um, I always arrange a, if, if those dates are available, that's, that's the main thing. If, if I'm free on those dates, then I'll then come and meet you. I'll meet the animals. We'll go through their routines, etc. Really, mainly just so that 
you can suss me out, see if you like me, think if I would, would fit the job and be, you know, capable of it. I mean, I, I like to think I am, but it's nice to meet people and just face to face and just go through their routines, etc. what's expected. And um, yeah, just go from there, really. Yeah, so you make sure pets aren't called crazy. Well, I mean, I'm quite used to that, so <laughs> <laughs> I'd be quite surprised if I went to a normal household. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that won't put me off. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, cool. So what does your um, what's a typical day for you look like? Um, does it differ in the summer and in the winter, or? So the winter, obviously, um, the evenings drawing in um, makes a difference. Um, I can dog walk in the dark, that's not a problem. But if I'm looking after horses, etc., that's a bit more tricky, unless I've got, you know, really good lighting, etc. I can't poo pick in the dark, for instance, that sort of thing. Um, so if I'm not house sitting, my day starts between sort of eight and nine in the morning, and I might have anything between sort of six to eleven jobs a day. Um, that in that's mainly dog walks. Um, three days a week I have two clients that have got horses so three days a week I go and bring the horses in change their rugs if necessary if necessary feed them um, just bed them down for the night that sort of thing one pony I look after he's on medication so I have to administer that via syringe which is obviously very important um, and yeah, but if I'm house sitting, my day starts earlier because I have to sort the animal, and especially with your menagerie, I'll probably have to get up <laughs> about 4 a.m. <laughs> we don't, but maybe we should. <laughs> um, and I do have a lady that helps me with work now. She's, right. she's worked for me for about three years now. Um, and pre-COVID, I was doing a lot of house sitting. So she would help me with other jobs throughout the day, which allowed me more time to, to be with the house sitting. The house sitting animals yeah. etc um yeah so it really varies i could start work at nine and finish at four that's an eat that's a that's a short day for me other days i could be up at six and not finish till nine in the evening so it's it really varies just what sort of day i have but i love it i love that about my job what's the best bit then about your job the animals obviously yeah. Um, and I've got that lovely balance between, because I'm quite a sociable person and I love interacting with people, but the thought of sitting in an office with perhaps people who I don't particularly like <laughs> just fills me with dread. <laughs> I've got friends that work in offices and they just have to work with people who they don't get on with and it's just stressful. So everyone I work for is just lovely and now because they're working from home more i get to see them more so we have lovely chats and you know just catch up on things and i get to walk their dogs you know see to their pets see the horses that sort of thing so i love that about my job and um no two days are the same i absolutely cannot get bored in my job no and that's what i love absolutely. i think that's part of that's why you become your own boss isn't it because you get yeah. to pick and choose and yeah what you want to do isn't it exactly and um yeah it's just great i just i just never wake up in the morning and think oh unless it's torrential rain <laughs> i might think oh dear but generally i you know i never i've never regretted a day in my life starting this business do you think the dog do you think the dogs look out the door and go oh amy's gonna be here and it's pouring with rain <laughs> yeah some some when it rains they stick their noses out the door and think oh Not today God. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sort of saying, come on. <laughs> but yeah, Spaniels, Labs, they don't care. Uh, they don't care at all. They're out the door. But yeah, the more sort of, more pampered pets, I would say, aren't so keen. Yes. So, uh, yes. But yeah, no. we've got a Jack Russell cross Chihuahua and he's a bit of a princess. He doesn't like getting his feet feet wet. No, no, my dog, he's a Gus. Uh, he, Gus he's a Westie Jack Russell. Yeah. And he's sort of thinking, no, I'm not. Out. and if you do drag him out he's just looking at you like what are we doing this Can I go home now? Waste of my life yeah so <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask you um what the biggest animal you've looked after is but that's probably i, I didn't realize you looked after horses so that's probably going to be a horse isn't it that will be a horse yes um i 
also used to look after until they moved a family i i worked for had three rather robust sheep oh, really? um, one called minty which i just thought was brilliant <laughs> and uh yeah he was very very uh aggressive actually oh, really? so i i didn't have time to open the gate and shut the gate there was just no time for that so i used to have to throw some of his food into the field so that he'd run and get it like a dog with a ball and i'd quickly pole vault, vault over the gate <laughs> fill his trough with food and then pole vault back over the gate before he head butted me um, for more food so that was that was a great job <laughs> you ever get you oh yeah all the time yeah. all the time <laughs> i was just i was literally about as tall as him so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd have quite a few bruises but he was brilliant he was a real character <laughs> well, what's the smallest what's the smallest animal you've looked after uh so bar goldfish oh, yeah. a lot of people have goldfish that i just need to pop in you know and, and feed etc um i did look after a gecko called sydney and um had to feed her live crickets which <laughs> yeah which was which was fine but i was it was probably the most nerve-wracking job i've ever done because i just was so fearful of dropping that tub of crickets <laughs> yeah. and infesting their house <laughs> when they returned from their lovely holiday but um thankfully that didn't happen so uh sydney was fed the crickets stayed in their tub and all was well oh that's so, good <laughs> and i looked after about 14 tortoises as well all in the same house oh the same house yeah yeah right. yeah so uh, i was a mad woman going to tesco's every other day buying a uh, trolley load of lettuce <laughs> lettuce leaves yeah, yeah the sudden <laughs> run on lettuces yeah so everyone just thought i was oh god there's that lettuce woman again <laughs> feed the tortoises yeah yeah exactly that was me <laughs> you have to wait around for them to eat it because they're not the quickest of eat eaters are they no they're just not quick at anything but they were a lot of them were were um only recently hatched so they're a bit more lively than mm. you know, the older they get so yeah they were good fun actually surprisingly yeah. <laughs> certainly different isn't it different to your sort of day yeah. job absolutely i can look after a huge variety of animals so it's yeah. great brilliant so i i put out that we we're going to do this um chat and some people in the facebook pages have asked some questions okay so, um jenny jenny's asked do you want the dogs from people's houses or do you collect them and take them to exercise somewhere else i think jenny's got a um an ex-police dog oh so wow okay got an ex-police shepherd and an ex-police spaniel so Sometimes the shepherd might not be able to be walked out and around. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do either really. Generally, I will walk from people's homes. Mm. So I'll pick the dog up and take them out for a walk from there. Um, and I do work for a lady who has, she lives in the country, but actually there's no public footpath directly from her house. So right. I'll collect the dogs and take them to the, the nearest available field where there's footpaths etc and walk them from there um, awesome. yes yeah, so i i really I'm, I'm insured for a pet taxi so i can i can have dogs in my car and, and travel them around but not nice big stinky wet dogs well yeah i just have to unfortunately just just uh, <laughs> i always get charged more at the uh the car wash <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it should be thirteen pounds, and I get charged about twenty-five because all the dog hair right. mud. <laughs> wow. So yeah. I've got another um, another lady called Claire. She also owns an, an ex um, police dog. Okay. Her friends. Um. So she asked, "Do you walk dogs in groups or on their own, as in with their or with their housemates?" And um, yeah, do do you collect multiple dogs from different households and walk them, or is it always single? So I'm insured to walk up to six dogs at a time. Right. I personally don't like doing that. I always err on the side of caution and I'm very conscientious and I always think, what if this happens? What if this happens? So I would never walk a big group of dogs purely because you don't know who you're going to meet on a walk. You could meet a dog that's perhaps not so friendly, is quite intimidated by essentially a pack of dogs. Yeah. 
if a scuffle breaks out or a fight or anything, you've got a lot of dogs to handle. Um, so generally I will do the individual dog walking. If people have two or three dogs in one household, yeah. that's absolutely fine. They know each other, etc. They're comfortable with each other. That's fine. Um, I do work for a client who's got uh, 60 acres of private land and he's completely happy for me to walk other dogs with his dog because right, I want yeah. her to be socialised, etc. So the only time I will walk in a group is when I walk there. So I might have sort of four or five dogs with me, but it's fully dog proofed and there's no, uh, you know, that there's no one else walking on his yeah. lap. So I like to make sure, just from a safety point of view, there are dog walkers that walk in group, and that's absolutely fine. Me, personally, I wouldn't do that. That was just not something I feel really comfortable with. Yeah, as far as personal choice, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I am a warrior, so <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to, you know, feel completely comfortable. Yeah, that's great. So Kirsty, um, she's asked a few questions. Uh, the first one is, how do you make the dogs behave themselves? Or do you get some really wild dogs that you have to deal with? Yeah, million dollar question. How do you make, <laughs> it's like, how do you make a child behave itself? <laughs> um, I don't really think it's about making a dog behave itself. I think it's about managing its behavior and working with it. Yeah. I'm not a dog trainer and I would, would never ever say I was, but I'm very experienced with dogs. Um, and working with them for 10 and a half years, I got to know a bit about the behavior of dogs. Um, but it's really, if they're undergoing any training or there's training in place, I will always keep up with that on the walks. For instance, recall work. Um, some owners like their dogs just to have a bit of manners. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps sitting before crossing the road, waiting until their food's put down before they eat it, that sort of thing. So it's really, finding out about their personalities and i'll get that from the owners i would always ask and you know find out about the characteristics of the dogs because just like people they've got their own personalities their own hang-ups some dogs you know a few dogs i walk um have quite sort of um they're, they're very nervous yeah um and they're rescue dogs and they're very reactive to other dogs. So I have to just make sure I'm aware of my surroundings, who's around me, um, be on the ball. I can't be looking at my phone with a dog that, you know, is, uh, could potentially, um, you know, act up when they see another dog, something yeah. like that. And there's the other end of the scale where I look after quite big, boisterous dogs who love nothing more than just bowling someone over or, you know, you, you can't have a dog just, going 90 miles an hour, bowling a child or an elderly person over, or equally, um, you know, a, a small dog or an elderly dog, because they're going to cause, you know, cause damage. Yeah. So it's really being aware of my surroundings, being on the ball, and knowing that dog and getting to know them and really working with them, to be honest. I'm pretty guilty of that. I'm probably one of those walkers that I'm, I'm filming my dogs for Instagram and then <laughs> look up and they've, they've all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you're filming the dog and not on Facebook or something or having a chat with your mate or something. Yeah, yeah it's normally like in, so, putting stuff on Instagram for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Kirsty goes on to ask, if, do you uh, uh, let the dogs off the lead? Yes, so I am insured too. Right. And if the owners are, are comfortable with me letting them off the lead, that's absolutely fine. And I do think the dogs, especially, you know, working dogs, those sorts of breeds, they need to let off steam. You can't have a Springer Spaniel on a lead doing a, a, a 20 minute street walk every day because that's just not, or a Collie, a breed like that, that's just not going to uh, benefit that dog no. anyway whatsoever. Um, so yes, ideally I prefer to walk the dogs off the lead, um, but I do have to make sure that they are fine with other dogs and also, they're not going to go disappearing for an hour for hours on end. <laughs> yeah, <I've got laughs> I, yeah, I do have back to back jobs. And if someone says to me, oh, you can let the dog off the lead, but it might go missing for two hours. Unfortunately, I have not got that time. No. So, um, yeah, it really depends on what the dog's like and uh, yeah, and whether the owners are comfortable with it. But I do prefer letting dogs off the lead 100%. Yeah, I understand that. I've been um, walking our dogs before work and 
and one of our dachshunds has taken to rabbit holes and badger holes. Oh, and goodness. Yeah. My, uh, I'm like, come on, I need to go now. I need to get home, but I have to go and catch them and uh, put them on leads. Otherwise, you just, they just can't yeah. they come back. It's, the, it's always typically when you could really do without it, when you're really pushed for time, they think, yeah, do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Off for a... <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> Off for an hour. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, that's it. But then that's all part and parcel of the job. <laughs> it's yeah. to be expected. <laughs> so you do obviously do a lot of walking what's your sort of average step count on a daily basis so my record which i actually took a screenshot of because i would i am i impressed myself was uh over forty seven thousand steps in, in one, one day. day yeah wow. so i'd probably done about a 14 hour day at that point <laughs> <laughs> um but i generally average sort of 30 35 000. a day uh, yes oh yeah at least if I if I only did thirty thousand steps, that's a bad day. That's a bad day for me. So Amazing. yeah, yeah. And obviously pre-COVID, it was sort of up there with the high thirties. Um, I'm not sure how many miles that is. I really need to check that out. But I think it's a fair few. Yeah, that's incredible. Have you ever taken a bike out with your dogs? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just asking for trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I'd need stabilizers at least. <laughs> but uh, thirty-five thousand steps. You must go. Do you go through loads of shoes and? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, oh yes. They don't last long with me. I'm always ordering more work boots, <laughs> more coats, etc. So yeah, yeah, I go for a lot of work gear. That's um, Rachel, the lady that owns the pet shop in Tenton. She asked. Yeah. Yeah. She asked Hi, the question. <laughs> can you recommend a pair of waterproof boots for dog walking? Yeah, well, this is the million dollar question. Um, I have spent up to £300 on a pair of walking boots and they just rotted. They were useless. Yeah, I now use uh, the Muck Boots, yeah. the Muck Boot Company, and they're just an ankle slip on boot. Um, easy to, to just, you know, like there's no laces, nothing like that. Um, and I find they're really good. And um, Aigles are very good as well. Um, so I can only really recommend that, but, but, so, but yeah, I've been through the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> you should get sponsored by them. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. I should do sort of a testing. Uh, you, should write, you should write to them and say, yeah, you know, you want me to, to tie your boots out. I do 35,000 steps per day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll test your boots to destruction. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they are literally, I wish I kept my boots because I threw a pair out literally the other day and they were just, completely split everything and covered in mud and I wish I kept them actually I could have shown you how awful yeah. they were because that's what happens to my work <laughs> oh, <he's spot> <laughs> shouldn't be surprised walking dogs yeah absolutely <laughs> that's brilliant it's been um, it's been really interesting to find out about um, barking mad about animals and your business and what you do and how you do it so uh, thank you for your time today no thank um, you it's been great if people want to get to know you or find out or inquire about your services how can they how can they get hold of you in it so i've got a website barkingmadaboutanimals.co.uk and also a facebook page so i can be contacted on there there's a contact form or you can just send me a message or my phone number which is obviously on there um drop me a text or you can call even if it's not about a you know a job particularly but just anything you know animal based I do get my clients, I actually had a client earlier who rang me just, just for a bit of advice about her dog. She's a first time dog owner and um, he's not been very well lately. He's, he's been to the vets, etc. And uh, yeah, she just wanted a bit of advice and just to make sure she was doing the right thing, etc. So I'm cool. always here cool. to answer any, any questions. And what, what, do you, uh, what work are you doing tomorrow? What are you going to be doing tomorrow? So tomorrow um, I start at eight and I'm dog walking all day and then I have the horses to finish. Right. So yes, but I should finish about four-ish tomorrow. So that's lovely. Nice so it's Friday finish. night. I mean, we yeah. can't go anywhere. So um, <laughs> I'll be raving at home. <laughs> <laughs> or a Zoom quiz or something. Maybe. Yeah, I'll actually probably be putting up some shelving. That's what I'm going to be doing ah. tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, wish you the best of yeah. luck. This Thank you. you. Yeah, and, lovely um, to talk to you. Speak to and you. And I hope everyone's enjoyed it.